Hi everyone, I wanted to share with you some of the experiences I've had with Scratch. Um, Scratch is an incredible tool for teaching and learning and getting the kids really creating things. And over the summer I worked at a summer school and one of the projects we were working on over a two week period was getting the kids of grades three to five or year four to six to create a game using Scratch. I wanted them to really delve into multiple screens and understanding the different ways of using Scratch to create such a really good game. So in this first video, I just want to show you something that I've done and um, produced. Um, it's not quite finished, but it, you'll get the idea. So this is called the Amazing Maze. I think a maze game is a really good way of getting kids uh, engaged because you can get mazes, they can create their own mazes, you can get in mazes from the internet. There's lots of different ways of getting mazes that you can put into Scratch. So let's play this game and let me talk you through it. Let's open this up to full screen like this. It starts off with a welcome screen and it's asking us to press the space bar to begin. So let's do that. Here's my character and then what I can do is walk him around the maze. I have a timer down here that tells me that I have 30 seconds or so. I have a score, lives, and my character up here. So the idea is to collect as many apples as I can in the time that, that I've got in order to get there. So uh, I've got 10 more seconds and when the, t when the time runs out, as you'll see, I get a game over screen and time's up. Press the space bar to play again. So everything resets and back I go. Uh, this time I'm just going to go to the end. So you can see what actually happens. And then as he disappears, he goes disappears off. There you go, a little cheer. Congratulations. Now we move on to the next level. Here we've got another screen and another maze. So as we go, and this one's a little slightly harder. So I'm very quickly going to get to the end of this one. You have again 30 seconds to do it. There we go. And again, we get a cheer. It goes to the congratulations screen and then moves on to the final level which is level three. My little character's got a little bit smaller now, as you can see at the bottom. And, and this character then has to get to the end of the maze as well. So this is a really good way of actually structuring a game and understanding what actually happens when you get to the end, when you collect things, when you have scores, lives, and timing, etc. Okay, time's up. So let's just come out of that and let's go and see inside. So I want to show you some of the code now. Here are all my sprites. I've got one sprite, one sprite for every level. Here are all my rewards. Over here I've got my back backdrops, different backdrops here. So I'm really building and setting up my game before I've even started. So if we delve into the code here, if I click on this character here, all right, this character is the character that appears in the corner. So if I just play that, there we go. If I just stop that there, okay. And this is the character that Pico here. So what's happening is when this is clicked, he disappears, okay, because we want the game to start, all right. When this level appears, he's going to appear. So when the backdrop switches to the next level, hide it. When the backdrop switches to level one, then we want it to show um, and this is where it goes through the costume changes as you can see here the different costume changes that he's got so um, there's lots of things going on on that screen then we move on to character here and this is the character we've got within the maze and you can see there's a lot going on on this screen so when backdrop one switches to level one it's going to do all of this when the backdrop switches to level one again we're going to show the lives when it switches to level two we're going to hide the character and um, when the Backdrop switches to level one. And again here, we've got some more information going on here with the timers, the lives, etc. Now, I'd like to stress that I'm not a programmer. So if any programmers are watching this and they think, well, this is not the most efficient way of actually creating something like this. Well, uh, agreed, it's not. But what happened when I did this, I was learning. And this was my way of actually creating the maze game. So I wanted that to be where the students started as well, because I was beginning where the students were beginning. I'd never used Scratch before. 
The students had never used Scratch before, so I wanted them to actually understand, like me, how to actually build a game. And this is how I did it. This is how I built it. And I learned as I did it. Then I actually created other maze games as a result of this. In a second maze game that I did, um, if I go to my stuff here, in my other project, if I look at the amazing maze game 2, and see inside of that. In this one, I've got enemies. So these are the enemies. So if I play this... We've got enemies now. So, and when the enemy touches the cat, and then she dies. Okay, so there's some other things going on in my second version of the maze game. What I'd like to do in the next lesson is really start from the beginning and then start building this game from scratch and hopefully do it together like I did it with the students when I was doing this in the summer.